Dear students, now two lectures are devoted to statistical techniques in population studies. I know that uh, these days a lot of students from social sciences background are going for population studies and demography and they do not have the right background in mathematics and statistics. So, my presentation will be simple and I would focus more on what are statistical techniques or what kind of statistical techniques are used in population studies and uh, what kind of purposes do they serve. So, uh, the main purpose of applying mathematical and statistical techniques is to build models models are a representation of reality, but not the reality. You choose certain aspects of reality and express them in mathematical or algebraic forms and that becomes a model. Models can also be physical, diagrammatic, descriptive, mathematical and uh, uh, these models or representations of reality represent only selected aspects of reality and that too on the basis of existing knowledge. All models need further improvement as more data come, as more understanding of uh, mathematics develops and uh, as our expectations from models develop, uh, then models are improved. So, accordingly there are simple models and there are complex models. There are also deterministic models and stochastic models. Deterministic models are those which deal with certain kind of variables while stochastic models are those which deal with probability events. There are two types of data in population studies qualitative data and quantitative data. Qualitative data come from ethnographic studies or uh, from surveys when the variables are qualitative. They are used to generate hypothesis and understand subjective meanings in Max Weber sense. For example, example of unmet needs that we discussed last time. Quantitative data are used for hypothesis testing and prediction, size of habitation, dropout rate, etcetera. And this quantitative methodology includes modeling. There are several uses of models. Models are used for estimation, population policy experimentation and theory building. They are also used for description of demographic phenomena, interpretation of data and often to smooth out errors in data of questionable nature or erroneous data, data with known errors. Models provide answers to many questions which cannot be answered otherwise due to lack of data or observations or because experimentation is not possible. Examples of questions that can be answered through modeling, but not through field work, observation or surveys. How many people have ever lived on earth? Now, we do not have historical record of how many people have ever lived on earth no survey can be conducted to estimate this number and uh, no ethnographic work or any, any other source of data can answer this question. But models can and uh, uh, some simple techniques developed by Nathan Kiefitz 
and other demographers have answered this question. I think the answer would be that something close to 100 billion people have ever lived on this planet earth and uh, the present 7 billion population of the world 7.7 .7 to be more exact is 7.7 percent of all those who have ever lived on the earth. Another question which can be answered by building models is that in a country having a life expectancy of 70 years, India is in that situation, what proportion of people are likely to survive till the age of 65? Or those who are already of age 65, how many more years of life they can expect to live? Another question, if the present schedule of fertility, by schedule I mean the set of age specific fertility rates remains unchanged. You, know, you have age specific fertility rates of India for the year 2018 and imagine that the same rates operate for several decades. How many children a woman will produce in her lifetime? We have discussed total fertility rate and by adding age specific fertility rates we arrive at total fertility rate and this is also a kind of model. If the prevalence rate of HIV is reduced to half, what will be its impact on life expectancy? And when I was discussing life tables, I said that such questions can be answered by building multiple decrement life tables. Here we will need life tables according to cause of death. And, uh, by using mathematical model and by eliminating HIV by 50 percent, we can recalculate life expectancy in that population. Another interesting question that can be answered by using model is that if all couples follow a stopping rule of alpha sons and beta daughters, what will be its effect on the sex ratio? of the population. You know, uh, in 50s and 60s, the norm was or the stopping rule was two sons and one daughter. Cup all couples or most couples wanted two sons and one daughter and the same norm continued for several years. Nowadays, in urban area, there are many couples who want only one child irrespective of sex. So, uh, under these stopping rules, we can calculate uh, uh, how many children will be born on the average. Uh, it will not be alpha plus beta because all the couples will not be so lucky that uh, in first alpha plus beta children, they have alpha sons and beta daughters. Some are still waiting for sons and some are still waiting for daughters and therefore, the average number of children will be more than alpha plus beta and that can be estimated. Another question is are there errors in census age data? How can we know whether there are errors in census age data? We have a model of age distribution. Um, usually for correcting errors in age data, we made use of stable population theory and stable population provides uh, age data uh, for different values of life expectancy or death rate and growth rate of population. You can uh, prepare uh, age data for a particular stable population and uh, compare your empirical data with the data of stable population and uh, that will this comparison will show uh, that at certain ages your population, empirical population may be underestimated or overestimated. So, uh, you can correct your age data before using them for prediction of India's population. Another interesting question that can be answered by building models is that if the data are available on proportion married by age and census data provides uh, such information for different ages or for different age groups you know what proportion are unmarried, married, 
widow, divorce, separated. How can we calculate average age of marriage uh, and uh, singulate age of marriage uh, is one such uh, way of calculating average age of marriage in that population. Now, in general, what are uh, mathematical and statistical models? Models are mathematical and or statistical expressions of relationships between variables describing some major chosen aspects of a phenomenon. So, uh, uh, even a regression line is a model. Uh, exponential growth rate of population describes a model and life table is also a model. Actually, life table is called a stationary model of population. In population studies, they are often used to explore a relationship between different components of demographic systems and to explore relationship between demographic variables on the one hand and socio-economic and cultural variables on the other. Exponential growth model of a population such as p t equal to p 0 e raised to power r t is an example of a simple mathematical model which states that population growth follows the exponential model. When the relationships are developed using statistical methods and contain an element of uncertainty probabilistic models, they are called statistical models. So, mathematical models are analytical and statistical models are stochastic or wherever there is an element of probability or chance or random measurements or random errors, we use statistical models. Statistical models are closer to reality than mathematical models. They are particularly suited for the studies of random errors models using probability distributions, Monte Carlo computer simulation methods. Many demographic uh, studies have been based on Monte Carlo computer simulation methods. Uh, in these introductory lectures, we will not be able to go into these issues, but I am just indicating that if somebody has the right background and wants to know more on these things, then one can go through books on computer simulation. Because of their reliance on repeated computation of random or pseudo random numbers, then regression analysis, discriminant analysis, factor analysis and all statistical models. These days structural equation models or path analytical models are becoming more common in analyzing survey data. A history of models in population studies, at least to me. Uh, in the first volume of Population and Development Review, which was published in 1975, Nathan Kifitz published an article entitled, How Do We Know the Facts of Demography? Kifitz argued that empirical relationships based on regression analysis can be misleading as they depend heavily on the cases for which data are available. If you change the sample, then estimates of regression equation will also change. Without modeling questions regarding cause and effect, multiple causation and nature of relationship cannot be answered. Illustration, Kiefer showed that empirical relationship between percent age at 65 and over and growth rate of population was dependent on. Uh, Nathan Kefid uh, regressed proportion of 65 and over as dependent variable on growth rate of population as independent variable. And he found that uh, the regression coefficients vary and they depend on number of countries for which data are available. If you run this regression analysis on say 10 countries, you find one result and if you run this regression analysis on 90 countries then the results will be different and homogeneity among the countries. So, regression coefficient also depends on whether countries are homogeneous or heterogeneous. 
these situations demand application of analytical and mathematical models because the regression equation does not work. The results of regression equation will be highly variable. One of the most known population model uh, is a stable population model. It is a mathematical model that shows the relationship between proportions at different ages and fertility and mortality rates. The stable population model assumes constant fertility and mortality. It is a one sex model. The model is close to migration means it assumes that in the population that we are modeling there is no in migration or out migration and this is a special case of life table or stationary population. Actually stationary population is that a stable population in which growth rate is 0. So, you can treat a stationary population also as a type of a stable population. Growth rate is 0. So, a stationary population has a number of properties. A stable population with 0 rate of growth are of special interest to demographers. Uh, in such types of stable populations, the number of persons at any age x multiplied as as well as total population are fixed. Let me repeat in such types of stable populations means life stable population or stationary population the number of persons at any age x as well as total population are fixed. In uh, stationary population total population remains same and number of persons at any age also remains same. The number of births is same as the number of deaths that is why growth rate is 0. They are called stationary population. People die at each age as per the given schedule of mortality. There is no migration. It is a one sex model. Uh, life tables or stationary population models are built separately for males and females. They are also built sometime for country as a whole. But because of differences in age specific death rates between males and females, uh, life tables or stationary models are used separately for males and females. And another assumption in building stationary population model is that deaths at any age are evenly distributed, which means that those people who will die between say age 20 and age 21, uh, one twelfth of them will die in the first month, one twelfth in the second month and so on. The distribution of deaths between 20 and 21 is uniform. Applications of life tables. The much used life expectancy at birth comes from a stationary population model. It is independent of age distribution and can be compared across populations varying in age distribution. Life table death rate, this is something which all of you should understand that uh, uh, we define life table death rate as 1 upon life expectancy. For example, if life expectancy at birth is 50, the crude death rate is 1 upon 50 or 0 0.02 or 20 per 1000. In India today life expectancy is around 70. So, 1 upon 70 means 0 0.014 or 14 per 1000 is the life table is equivalent to life table death rate in India. Now, actual death rate is much lower. Life table death rate is 14, but actual death rate is much lower. And that is because the age distribution of the actual population of India is not the same as the age distribution of life table population, which is generated from age specific death rates uh, themselves. India's life expectancy uh, this is uh, this I wrote when life expectancy was smaller. So, India's life expectancy if it is 64 then uh, death rate would be 15.6 which is much above the death rate when life expectancy was 64 and that is due to differences in age distribution of population and uh, population 
of uh, stationary model generated by lifetime by age specific death rates. The most important of all the demographic models is the stable population model. It says that if individuals are born at a constant rate of 1 person per unit of time and the survival probability of a person aged x is p x then at any time the expected size of the population is given by e x means expected value of x equal to integral 0 to alpha p t d t where e x refers to the expected size of population at age x p t refers to chance of survival from birth to age t and alpha refers to the upper limit of the age distribution which may be around 100. A stable population model is however a deterministic model and population following the stable population model always results in a population in which the proportion of persons at any age x does not change with time. Further suppose the individuals are born at a constant rate then the size of population at time t would be v t equal to b, b for birth uh, e raised to power alpha t integral 0 to alpha or 0 to infinity actually 0 to infinity because infinity can be taken as uh, the upper limit of the age interval or longevity e raised to power minus rho x p x d x and here alpha and rho are two constants. Uh, now, without going into details of uh, 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 this stable population model, I would like to raise some other conceptual issues. Actually, when we were students, we used stable population theory to estimate birth and death rates of India because the data that we had at that time was only from census and census gave us growth rate of population and age distribution. By choosing an appropriate stable population and this assumption that birth and death rates have been unchanging for a long time was quite safe at that time. So, by choosing an appropriate life table for which uh, growth rate and age distribution often signified by proportion of people below the age of 35 or below 30 or below 25, uh, we could attribute uh, birth rates and death rates of a stable population to the real population of India. When death rates started changing means one of the two things either fertility or mortality start changing then we have cosi or cosi stable population. Mathematical models have been used for prediction and uh, among them graphs and uh, algebraic functions for exponential function, logistic curve, Mackeham curve, Gompard's curve, polynomials, hyperbolic functions and autoregressive series often used by economists are also used by demographers and logistic curve has been found to be of highest importance. This is the equation of logistic curve dn by dt n is population k is the maximum possible. Uh, population the, uh, the limit that population can reach r is the maximum rate of growth. So, T n d n by d t equal to r n k minus n by k or n becomes uh, size of population becomes k upon 1 plus b e raise power mi minus r t. This is Gompard's curve those who are uh, more interested into curves and uh, models you know they can go through se there are now several books on mathematical demography um, and they can also use B D Misraj and introduction to population study all these curves and graphs are given. Among applications of these models one, uh, one can look at for simple applications of models UN manual 8 uh, which was published in 1974 uh, and that showed that a constant urban rural growth difference leads to logistic growth of the degree of urbanization or percent urban. Means if urban and rural growth rate separately may change, but as long as urban rural growth rate is fixed 
it can be derived that uh, then percentage urban follows a logistic model. Uh, in, initially the level of urbanization is 0 as time passes percentage urban starts increases and uh, it increases at increasing rates. A time comes when there is highest rate of growth of urbanization after that rate of growth of urbanization start declining, but uh, percentage urban keeps on increasing. Now, this model has been of immense use in predicting sub populations like urban population, rural population, district wise population, population of certain occupations because it provides a working model of the mechanism of self correction and it is a kind of ratio method, but more sophisticated than uh, predicting ratio on the basis of fitting some linear or some uh, polynomial curve to the past data. It has a logic of its own. It is uh, most commonly used model in sociological applications also today. Then uh, uh, it leads to what is written here logistic regression. Logistic regression is a technique of regression analysis uh, when the dependent variable is binary and you can uh, code its values as 0 and 1 only. So, then for p you cannot use a simple linear regression, then we go for logistic regression and in, in place of working with p we work with odds ratios p upon 1 minus p and we assume that log of odds ratio log p upon 1 minus p follows a linear regression and can be expressed in terms of socio-economic or cultural variables. So, this uh, bullet log of odds ratio of a binary qualitative dependent variable is expressed as a linear function of a number of qualitative or quantitative variables. It can accommodate both qualitative and quantitative uh, independent variables. So, uh, logistic, uh, logistic model uh, and logistic uh, regression binary logistic. Logistic uh, regression can uh, they are of immense value and logistic regression interestingly can be used not only when dependent variable is divided into two categories only and you code them 0 and 1. Even when you have 3 or 4 categories and there is an order between those categories some ranking some hierarchy then also logistic model can be used. So, in, in this lecture I just wanted to introduce uh, the purpose of modeling. There are some questions which cannot be answered by using data from experiments, from surveys, from ethnography, from uh, uh, case history, case history method or extended case method or other method that usually sociologists use and in that case uh, building of mathematical models or statistical models. Uh, can be of immense help. Mathematical models are usually analytical while statistical models are those which contain or which deal with probabilistic variables, uh, random variables or which include a random uh, term called error and uh, accordingly then uh, stochastic models are used. Thank you.